Uh, presenter kita yang terakhir ini adalah yang sudah siap di layar ya. Uh, I will introduce you to Mr. Bobur Sobirov from Uzbekistan and Circle, uh, sorry, Circle Research Network. What is it about and how it will useful for our journals? Bagaimana tentang uh, apa namanya uh, Circle Research ini networknya yang seperti apa dan akan bagaimana di kemudian hari? Dan impact-nya apa terhadap jurnal kita semua di Indonesia dan bagaimana nanti misalnya kita bisa kolaborasi dan sebagainya akan dibahas oleh Mr. Bobur sendiri. Bapak-Ibu bisa menanyakan di Q&A di Q&A untuk pertanyaan-pertanyaan dan boleh menggunakan bahasa Indonesia. Nanti saya akan bantu untuk mentranslate dalam bahasa Inggris. Uh, Oke, okay, for Mr. Bobur Sabirov, you uh, time is yours. You can explain and you can use the time as you like. Don't worry. Okay. So, am I audible? Yes, yes. So, Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Bobur Sabirov uh, from Uzbekistan. Actually, today, uh, thanks to Our friends, Mr. Arbain and Muhammad Hanzil Murtaza, uh, they invited me to UMSIDA and to make partnership with RGI and uh, UMSIDA Sidoarjo. Uh, the main target is to represent Silk Road Research Network. So if you let me, I would like to start my presentation. So about Silk Road Research Network, why uh, this research network is interesting for this country, for uh, RGI and members of RGI? Because the first of all, main goal of Silk Road Research Network is to make a global network and uh, it will help uh, RGI to cover about 16 countries. Because in 16 countries, I will... Uh, count the list of the countries and uh, Central Asian countries like Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. All of them are neighbor countries and uh, these countries can easily uh, connect, could be connected with the Silk Road Research Network, RGI. So the main purpose of this uh, project is to make webinars, to make seminars together, to make joint journals and conferences. Uh, to make MOU and uh, to invite professors in our country as a guest lecture and to get some guest lectures from these countries. So according to this presentation, you can see that IDEA was uh, funded and the uh, IDEA was proved by UMSIDA, uh, UMSIDA Muhammadiyah uh, Sidoarjo uh, University and RGI. Also, there was a memorandum of understanding with UMSIDA's Vidya Gama, uh, Mahakam Samarinda University, with Mr. Arbain and Mr. Uh, Tanzil Multazam, and uh, with rectors, we have signed MOU with these two universities, but uh, you can see logos up. Uh, there were already seven different uh, universities from Tajikistan and Uzbekistan already has got MOU. Today also we have done another MOU and there nowadays from our region more than 20 universities waiting uh, to make MOU with Indonesian universities under the project called Silk Road Research Network. The main program and services that uh, we are expecting from this project would be uh, some uh, supportive, uh, supportive programs, supportive, let's say, products by UMSIDA and by uh, these universities of uh, RGI partner universities and partner, let's say, journals could be, uh, first could be academic repositories. Nowadays, in our region, most of universities do not use this kind of service and most of them, uh, they don't know idea uh, of using academic repositories, as I have already noticed in uh, this region and the project of RGI already many trainings and I think most of universities already using this kind of academic repositories. So under MOU, there could be some repositories and after agreement, let's say after agreement of the 
uh, head of the universities, we can easily share our ideas on academic repositories. Some files could be shared. Next could be training sessions. Nowadays in Uzbekistan and other neighbor countries, Scopus and Web of Science publications are compulsory in order to to QS rating. Before it wasn't like that. Before just publishing, let's say, on journal was enough. But nowadays, as in your country, there is accreditation by government and government asking to publish just on reputable and indexable journals. Still, in our country, there are many, let's say, uh, hacked journals and predatory journals of Scopus. So that means we need some academic, uh, let's say, training how to write papers, how to use artificial intelligence, how to use some statistic databases, how to submit papers, how to publish papers in different journals could be, uh, let's say, realize it by the help of RGI members, with the help of, let's say, universities of RGI in, uh, let's say, Indonesia. And this experience is very valuable in our country. Yeah, we have been publishing many papers in the last three years, and according to statistics, now we are going up and up, because in one year, approximately, we are publishing about uh, 5,000 papers, and all of them nowadays are indexed. But some people, they do not know which one is real, which one is fake, and moreover, they don't know uh, the requirement of the journal. Even if they know requirement of journal, let's say submission process is difficult for our researchers. So this program will help them to learn how to write, to learn how to submit, to learn how to, let's say, select journals. And uh, uh, some journals of, uh, let's say, members of AGI can also get papers from Uzbekistan. The next one is uh, awards. We are going to organize some scientific awards in order to identify who is working, let's say, properly, effectively in this region, because some of them need this kind of, let's say, award system in order to go up, in order to realize what they're doing. We need to find out better statistics, better metrics in order to make better, let's say, awarding system, just, uh, let's say, uh, statues, just diploma or certificate is worthless. We need to find out some unique style of awards and help our people to get this one because some of them are paying attention just on Google Scholar citation, H index. But nowadays in Uzbekistan, if you are going to Erasmus projects, if you are going to Tempus projects, mostly uh, uh, citations of scope is very important. Uh, nowadays we are going on this. Before we are using just Google Scholar citation and it was very valuable. Now, now it's not like that. People and let's say government is asking at least H3, H3 let's say level of citation from uh, Scopus. If you have this one, then government provide you some grants, scholarships, let's say opportunity to go abroad using Tempus projects, using let's say Erasmus projects. Actually Uzbekistan is very valuable partner for Erasmus Mundus and the European Union working on this. I myself I was, in, I was in Spain with the help of Erasmus project and uh, there we have many partners still they would like to work with us but government accreditation is asking from us these kind of points. Also book publishing man, man, manuscript let's say uh, publishing platforms as I see today uh, according to previous lectures let's say uh, speech I noticed that this is already on professional level here but still we do not have this kind of platforms. If you make MOU with any, let's say, publisher or with any university, we can realize joint product. It could be university plus universities. There could be agreement form between universities and we can publish our, let's say, books, manuscripts, papers on your repositories, on your, let's say, book publishing platforms because still we do not know experience of this. We need this one. The market is empty, people are ready to publish, but still we don't have experience of this. Moreover, I said here, uh, joint conferences, as I have already noticed it from RGI and from my, let's say, friends uh, with whom we are working for more than five years, uh, there is notice that there are many IOP conferences, uh, let's say many conferences are indexed on Scopus, but in order to make geographical diversity, maybe Uzbek scholars could be co-authors. And this project will help us to make joint research, not just a journal platform, not just 
publishing platform, we, we can put, let's say, our research and Uzbek scholars can easily go from Russia. People can join from Kazakhstan. Researchers can be easily join it and join research could be done and the publications could be, let's say, easily sent to Atlantis Press, to IOP or other, let's say, publish, publish houses. So we also can host some conferences and Indonesian, let's say, researchers can easily go to our country in order to be keynote speakers, in order to submit papers. But the point is, of the Silk Road point is, we do not know how to handle papers accordingly and according to IOP level, according to Atlantis Press. And this is the main point of partnership. You just need to get experience, need to give you ideas. You can get ideas, statistics from us. Some part could be written from this, let's say, region from Indonesian researchers or let's say universities. The second could be from our region. The same conferences you can organize in your country. We can come and we can participate or we can submit papers. If you organize conferences, you can join, you can submit papers and together with under the partnership, we can easily submit these research, let's say papers, these conference papers to different publishing houses. So this is lack of our universities. Lackage is just experience. We have, let's say funding from our government. We have ideas, we have researchers, but the main thing is now, uh experience sharing experience and synergy needed in order to make boom in our let's say uh, country according to the research here i also uh, got my presentation points according to uh, different let's say uh, steps what we can do according to the services you can see that Training of the journals and OGS management is also needed in Uzbekistan. Most of people, most of let's say universities, uh, has already they have already established a journal, but management is uh, let's say difficult for them because they don't know the process. Publication ethics could be uh, let's say spoiled. So if there are some partners from Indonesia for one journal, one university with the second one, the second part can easily guide how to run, how to manage. And if you manage properly, you can check from Scopus. None of, let's say, university journal is on Scopus. Uh, you can, you have noticed that just 113, let's say, uh, journals nowadays using OGS. The same in Uzbekistan, uh, we have 120 universities. All of them are ready to establish journals and still none of them, uh, let's say, indexed on Scopus. That means we are empty. If we submit on Scopus, maybe we can get indexing from Scopus. But for that one, as I said, we need some uh, partners from this region. And that can help us a lot in order to make uh, better understanding. So we can also make some events, uh, upcoming conferences, webinars, workshops. We have already started two workshops already done with the help of RGI members and with UMSIDA University. But each week we would like to make some kind of free tutorials in order to give your ideas, in order to introduce yourself, in order to get better, let's say, understanding of network. That could help us a lot. So why we are unique? Why? What is the main thing? Because we were before under the Soviet Union and uh, after Soviet Union collapse, uh, 16 countries in the, got independence. They are in the same level according to education. They are accord they, the problems are the same on 16 countries. These 16 countries each has, I, I have statistics here, you can see uh, statistics of uh, GDP or economic statistics or human resource development statistics, you can check that these countries like Armenia, Azerbaijan, Bel Belarus or Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Moldova, T uh, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, all of them, these countries, we can we can easily cover by Silk Road Research Network and all of them are ready to be partner of uh, Silk Road Research Network. You can see statistics in Uzbekistan nowadays, uh, 209 high educational uh, institutions from them. You can see that 36 could be as a university, uh, 48 could be like institution and so on. There are more than different, let's say, 300 magazines, but still there are some problems. Uh, we do not use uh, uh, OGS 
let's say products or PKP products. The same in, in Kazakhstan, there are 128 high educational universities and institutions. Still we need, or they need help of FGI and Silk Road Research Network to use proper management of the journals. In Kyrgyzstan also we have sort of, uh, 74 universities and most of them still need uh, partners from this region in order to make better scientific, let's say, collaboration. And all of these countries uh, and all of these, let's say, universities already have signed MOU, but some of them are not uh, linked here. Some of them are not listed here because I have uh, uh, got the MOU recently after the presentation and today we have signed one of them. So you can uh, read uh, from my side that this uh, universities are already having MOU with uh, Uksida and Samarinda University and uh, they, have, they have already agreed to be partner of Silk Road Research Network. Uh, I can read uh, some of them. It is Samarinda State University, Toronto Armet, next one is Groot International Tourism University, Tashkent State University of Economics, Tashkent State University of Information Technology, Bukhara State University, and we have been in Tajikistan with Indonesian friends, and we have uh, signed MOU with Institute of Economy and Trade of Tajik State University of Commerce in Hujant. So from Tajikistan also there are many universities they would like to join. Already we have interest from Georgia, uh, from other countries, or countries like Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, to make OU and to start working with, uh, let's say, pro, pro, pro project. So uh, in the in the first steps of the project, we got some funding and help from Sidoarjo University, and we have uh, already created this space, and we got year yeah, print uh, access from this university, and already our researchers uploading their papers and their research papers, their books on these two platforms, but still we need OGS or PKP uh, customization, let's say service or help from Indonesian part. Also journal indexing, as I said, you you can check from DOIJ, even in DOIJ, DOIJ uh, some journals are listed. It could be just 10, no more than 10. Uh, yeah, because we don't have idea of that project. The same, we need, yeah, 10, 10 journals could be there, but the same thing could be with Crossref. Most of journals are there, still they are not using Crossref. Instead, they are using other, let's say, supplementary or extra ser services to give DOI, DOI from free resources, but still we need this one. And each university uh, has lack of uh, year print or, let's say, this space services. Still, still we need this kind of, let's say, projects. Also, I have Notes it from Sido Arjo experience that you have already archives, yes, some uh, services already implemented according to science. And as a head of library, uh, Muhammad Tanzil already stated me how it's run, how it is established and how it's managed here. Still, we need more services which are already implemented in Indonesia. That experience we can easily... Uh, through, uh, we can implement and apply throughout uh, Central Asia and these 16 countries. In Central Asia, we have just five countries, neighbor countries, but in 16 countries, uh, language is the same. As I said uh, in my question to Dr. John, uh, Russian language is used in different countries, and even English language is not difficult, but just experience is needed. So uh, what other what other research, uh, let's say, network it can bring us? The uh, first is there could be some scientific research cooperation because we need to make some scientific research collaboration. Uh, there are many PhD researchers. They are searching for supervisors. They are searching for, let's say, joint research. They need some methodology. They need some statistics. They need, they need to compare two countries, for example, or two regions. It could be very interesting. Also, in their research papers, they are searching for co-authors. Co-authors could be very interesting to apply for Scopus. In recent one year, I myself in co-authorship published about 10 papers with Indonesian scholars. Uh, previously, it wasn't like that, but this year, with the help of my friends, uh, we have finished some papers and uploaded, and now all of them indexed in Scopus. 
thanks to collaboration in one year i published about 10 papers and the same action nowadays is very important in case of Uzbekistan with all researchers and not just in Uzbekistan in five countries or let's say in 16 countries that we are going to cover in, by the project called Security Research Network. Yeah, and the, the same thing uh, we have discussed, uh, let's say, in our previous slides, but actually for me what is interesting is that uh, we would like to get more ideas, we would like to get some feedbacks or from you in order to make better discussion 